Welcome to another deep dive. Today, um, today we're tackling a question. Oh. That might have okay. kept you up at night. All right. Why don't atoms just collapse? Hmm. We're diving into some fascinating excerpts from a scientific paper okay. to unravel this mystery. Sounds good. You ready to get a little quantum with me? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's a question that really highlights how yeah. our everyday intuition breaks down at the atomic level. Right. I mean, we've all seen that classic picture of an atom. Right. Electrons orbiting the nucleus. Yeah. Like tiny planets around the sun. Mm -hmm. But if that were truly accurate, yeah. wouldn't those electrons just spiral inward and crash yeah. into the nucleus. Totally. What's keeping them in check? Well, that's where things get really interesting. The yeah. answer lies in the realm of quantum mechanics, Okay. a world where things don't quite behave as we'd expect. Okay, so to understand why atoms don't implode, yeah. we need to take a trip down scientific history lane. Back in 1911, physicist Ernest Rutherford proposed this planetary model oh, of yeah. the atom based on his experiments. Hmm. Seemed logical at the time, but as we're about to discover, yeah. it had some major flaws. The problem is, if electrons were really orbiting like planets, right. they'd be constantly losing energy and spiraling inward. Okay. Think about it. Okay. If you swing a ball on a string, yeah. it eventually slows down and falls in adding. Okay. Classical physics predicted the same thing should happen to electrons. But mm. we know atoms are stable, right. so something else must be going on. So atoms are defying the laws of physics as we know them. Exactly. This is where I start to question everything I thought I knew about the universe. Yeah, this discrepancy baffled scientists for years and yeah. led to a complete paradigm shift in our understanding of the atom. So what was the breakthrough? Well, What's the secret sauce that keeps these atoms from imploding? It all started with the realization that energy isn't continuous, but comes in discrete packets called quanta. Hmm. This led to the development of quantum mechanics, mm. which fundamentally changed our understanding of how energy and matter behave at the subatomic level. Okay, I'm starting to see the light, but I need a little more guidance here. Sure. How did this quantum revolution explain the stability of atoms? A physicist named Niels Bohr came up with a model okay. that combined Rutherford's planetary model hey. with the idea of quantized energy. Mm -hmm. He proposed that Electrons can only exist yeah. in specific discrete energy levels or orbits around the nucleus. Okay. They can't just spiral inward because they can't occupy the space yeah. in between these allowed orbits. So it's like electrons are riding on a cosmic staircase, uh -huh. only allowed to step on certain steps. Yeah. They can't just slide down the railing. That's a great analogy. Yeah. And when an electron jumps between these energy levels, right. it either absorbs or emits a specific amount of energy yeah. corresponding to the difference between those levels. Okay. This helped explain why atoms emit light yeah. at specific wavelengths, right. which we see as distinct colors. That's incredible. So this quantum staircase model was a big step forward. Yeah. But was it the final piece of the puzzle? It was a huge leap. Right. But it still didn't explain why electrons were restricted to those specific energy levels. Yeah, yeah. Why couldn't they exist anywhere in between? Right. That's where things get even weirder. All right, you've got me hooked. Yeah. What's the next chapter in this atomic saga? Okay, well... Where did scientists go from there? Buckle up, because this is where our understanding of the atom I... takes a truly mind-bending turn. Oh, yeah. Enter Louis de Broglie, hmm. a physicist who proposed a radical idea in 1924. Okay. What if electrons weren't just particles? Okay. But also behaved like waves. Oh, hold on. Waves, yeah. like those things that ripple through water? Mm -hmm. How can something as tiny as an electron be a wave? It's one of the most counterintuitive concepts in quantum mechanics. Yeah. The idea of wave particle duality. Okay. Essentially, subatomic particles can exhibit both wave-like and particle-like properties, mm. depending on how we observe them. Okay, my brain is starting to hurt a little. Yeah. So if electrons are waves, yeah. how does that explain why they don't crash into the nucleus? Think of it like a guitar string. Okay. Only certain wavelengths can create stable, resonant patterns on a string. Right. Similarly, Electrons can only exist in orbits where their wavelengths fit perfectly. So it's like those electron waves are creating a kind of standing wave pattern exactly. around the nucleus. Uh -huh. 
and only specific orbits allow for those stable wave patterns to exist. That's a great way to visualize it. Okay. This wave nature of electrons is a key reason why they can't just spiral inward. This is seriously blowing my mind. Yeah. We're talking about a totally different picture of the atom than what I learned in school. Hmm. It's a picture that requires us to let go of our classical intuitions right. and embrace the strangeness of the quantum world. Okay. And we're just getting started. Okay. This wave-particle duality leads to some even more mind-bending concepts, like yeah. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Well, hold yeah. on. Before we jump ahead, okay. can we take a moment to just let this sink in? Sure. We've gone from electrons as tiny planets. Okay to electrons as waves, yeah. creating standing wave patterns around the nucleus. Yeah. It's a pretty radical shift in perspective. You're right. It's a lot to take in. Yeah. And we're about to delve even deeper into the rabbit hole of quantum mechanics. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Lead the way. All right. What's next on this quantum adventure? So we've established that electrons have wave-like properties. Right. And that helps explain why they don't just spiral into the nucleus. Right. But to really grasp the strangeness of it all, yeah. we need to talk about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Okay, I've heard of that principle. Yeah. But to be honest, it's always sounded a bit intimidating. Right. Can you break it down for me? Absolutely. In essence, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states that oh, yeah. we can't know both the exact position and the exact momentum of uh, a particle, like an electron, at the same time. Mm -hmm. The more precisely we know one, right. the less we can know about the other. So it's like trying to nail down a moving target. Yeah. If you focus on pinning down its position, yeah. you lose track of how fast it's moving right. and vice versa. That's a great way to think about it. Okay. This inherent uncertainty isn't due to limitations in our measuring tools, okay. but a fundamental principle of the universe itself. So it's not that we just need better instruments. Exactly. It's that this uncertainty is baked into the fabric of reality yeah. at the quantum level. Exactly. It's a really profound concept. Right that challenges our classical notions of how things work. And it has huge implications for our understanding of the atom. Okay, I'm following so far. Okay. But how does this uncertainty principle connect to the stability of atoms? Well, if an electron were to collapse into the nucleus, yeah. we'd know both its position and momentum with great certainty, right. violating Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. It's like, the universe has a built-in safeguard against atomic collapse. So the very act of trying to pin down an electron yeah. prevents it from getting too close to the nucleus. Uh-huh. It's like this fundamental uncertainty is holding the atom together. You're getting it. Okay. And this brings us to another mind-blowing concept. Yeah. Instead of thinking of electrons as tiny particles in fixed orbits, yeah. quantum mechanics describes them as existing in a cloud of probability okay. around the nucleus. Wait, so those neat little orbits we all learned about in school? Yeah. Those aren't really accurate? Not exactly. Okay. We I'm... can't pinpoint an electron's exact location at any given time. Instead, we can only talk about the probability of finding it mm. in a particular region. So it's like those probability maps they show on the weather forecast, uh -huh. you know, where they say there's a 60% chance of rain in yeah, a certain yeah, area. That's a perfect analogy. Uh -huh. It's all about probabilities, not precise locations. Right. The electron cloud represents the regions where the electron is most likely to be found. So if I'm picturing this correctly, yeah. we're moving from a deterministic view of the atom yeah. where everything has a fixed place right. to a probabilistic one right. where it's all about likelihoods and uncertainties. Exactly. It's like the atom has become this fuzzy, yeah. indeterminate entity. It's a radical departure from our classical intuitions. Yeah. But that fuzziness and uncertainty are precisely what gives atoms their stability right. and prevents them from collapsing. Okay, I think I'm starting to wrap my head around this. Okay. So let me try to summarize. Because of wave-particle duality and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, mm -hmm. we can't pinpoint the exact location of electrons. Right. They exist as clouds of probability around the nucleus. Uh -huh. And this fundamental fuzziness is what prevents them from crashing into the nucleus right. and makes atoms stable. Yeah. Am I getting that right? You absolutely nailed it. Okay. You've just captured the essence of why atoms don't collapse. This is amazing. <laughs> but it makes me wonder yeah. if the atom is mostly this fuzzy cloud of probability. Right. Why can I hold a solid object in my hand? Right. Shouldn't I just pass right through it? That's a fantastic question. Yeah. 
And it leads us to another intriguing aspect of atomic behavior. Okay. It turns out that squeezing atoms too close together requires an incredible amount of energy. So there's some kind of resistance. Yeah. Like those electron clouds are creating an invisible force field uh -huh. around each atom. That's a great way to visualize it. Okay. The electrons in an atom occupy specific energy levels. Right. To force those atoms closer together, yeah. you'd need to overcome that resistance yeah. and push the electrons into higher energy levels. Okay, so it's like each atom has its personal space bubble. Exactly. Okay. And to breach that personal space, yeah. you'd need a tremendous amount of energy. Right. Think about trying to compress a beach full of sand grains into a thimble. Oh, wow. The energy required would be astronomical, literally on the scale of nuclear reactions. Wow. So those tiny electron clouds are packing a serious punch yeah. when it comes to resisting compression. Yeah. That explains why we experience matter as solid and right. can't just phase through object. Precisely. Okay. That resistance is what gives matter its solidity and structure. Okay. So we've learned that electron clouds prevent atoms from collapsing inward. Right and also make matter feel solid to us. Yeah. But the source material also mentions that electron clouds can take on different shapes, right? That's right. It's there not is. just one big spherical cloud for every atom. The shapes of electron clouds, also called orbitals, yeah. depend on the energy levels of the electrons within them. So it's not just about the probability of finding an electron at a certain distance from the nucleus, mm -hmm. but also about the shape of that probability cloud. Exactly. Okay. There are different types of orbitals, right. each with a distinct shape. Mm -hmm. The simplest one, called the S orbital, is yeah. spherical. Okay. But then there are P orbitals, yeah. which are dumbbell-shaped, right. and D orbitals, which yeah. have even more complex shapes, yeah. like four-leaf clovers. Whoa. So those simple diagrams of electron orbits we see in textbooks yeah. are just a starting point. Yeah. There's a whole world of complex electron cloud shapes out there. It's like an atomic art gallery with each element showcasing its unique set of yeah. electron cloud masterpieces. Wow. And these different orbital shapes play a crucial role in how atoms bond with each other right. to form molecules. This is making me want to pull out a chemistry textbook yeah. and dive deeper into the shapes and arrangements of mm -hmm. those electron clouds. Yeah. It's fascinating to think about how these intricate shapes at the atomic level right. influence the properties of matter on a larger scale. It's a beautiful example of how complexity can arise from seemingly simple building blocks. Yeah. And it highlights the interconnectedness between the microscopic world of atoms mm -hmm. and the macroscopic world we experience every day. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah. From the uncertainty principle to the shapes of electron clouds. Uh-huh. Before we wrap up, yeah. can we take a moment to appreciate just how weird and counterintuitive all of this is? Yeah. I mean, we're talking about particles that are also waves, right. probability clouds, mm -hmm. and a universe where uncertainty is fundamental. Yeah. It's enough to make your head spin. It is truly mind-boggling. Yeah. And even though quantum mechanics has been around for over a century, it still challenges our understanding of reality. I have a feeling we've only just scratched the surface of this quantum rabbit hole. Yeah. I'm curious about something. Okay. We've been talking about electrons as these fuzzy clouds of probability. Right. But what about the nucleus itself? Yeah. Isn't it supposed to be the solid, dense core of the atom? That's a great question. And it turns out right. even the nucleus isn't as well defined as we might imagine. Hmm. Remember, everything at the subatomic level is governed by the principles of quantum mechanics. So are you saying the nucleus is also a cloud of probability? That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. The protons and neutrons that make up the nucleus also exist as waves right. and exhibit quantum behavior. They don't have fixed positions, but rather exist as probability distributions. Whoa, so even the heart of the atom is fuzzy. Yeah. My mind is officially blown. It's pretty wild. But why don't we hear about the nucleus as a probability cloud? Right. As often as we hear about electron clouds. It's mainly a matter of scale. Okay. Protons and neutrons are much more massive than electrons. Right. And remember Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Yeah. The more massive a particle, the less uncertainty there is in its position. Right. So the proton's probability cloud is much smaller than the electrons. Exactly. Even though it still exists as a wave and exhibits quantum behavior. Precisely. But it's an important reminder that the entire atom, yeah. from the nucleus to the electron cloud, right. operates under the strange and wondrous laws of quantum mechanics. It's incredible to think that 
even the seemingly solid objects we interact with every day yeah. are ultimately made up of these fuzzy, indeterminate entities. Oh, it my. really changes your perspective on the nature of reality. It does. It forces us to reconsider what we mean by solidity yeah. and existence itself. This deep dive has been a wild ride. It has. We started with a seemingly simple question. Yeah. Why don't atoms collapse? Right. And ended up exploring the mind-bending world of quantum mechanics, yeah. uncertainty, yeah. and the probabilistic nature of reality. It's a testament to the power of curiosity and the beauty of scientific inquiry. Yeah. By asking fundamental questions, right. we can uncover the hidden wonders of the universe and right. challenge our understanding of how things work. And perhaps the most amazing thing of all yeah. is that this journey of discovery never really ends. You got it. There's always more to learn, yeah. more to explore, right. and more to wonder about. Absolutely. The world of quantum mechanics is vast and full of mysteries yet to be solved. And who knows what incredible insights await us yeah. as we continue to delve deeper into the quantum realm. Well, on that note, yeah. I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. Sounds good. We've journeyed from the classic planetary model of the atom to the fuzzy world of probability clouds. Right. And we've explored the mind-bending concepts of wave-particle duality and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Yeah. We've learned why atoms don't collapse, uh -huh. why we can't just squeeze them together. Right. And how even the nucleus itself exists as a cloud of probability. It's been a fascinating exploration of one of the most fundamental and counterintuitive aspects of our universe. I want to thank our amazing expert for guiding us through this incredible journey. My pleasure. And to our listeners, yeah. I encourage you to continue exploring the wonders of quantum mechanics. Yeah. We've just scratched the surface here. Uh -huh. And there's a whole universe of fascinating information out there waiting to be discovered. Keep asking questions. Yeah. Keep challenging your assumptions. Right. And keep an open mind to the infinite possibilities of the universe. Until next time, keep those minds curious. Yeah. And keep exploring the amazing world around us.